Hello and welcome to this week's episode of News Desk. I'm Matt and joining me today is Brittany and Ellie. We've got a lot in store for you this week as we take a look at Woosa's reaction to the change in graduation dates. We'll also be taking a look at AIM which is held on campus. On top of that we have Australia's biggest morning tea and the science of astronomy that was held at the Innovation Campus. An annual, an annual report released by the Australian Indigenous Mentoring Experience, or AIM, has shown that high school students taking the program here at the University of Wollongong have results higher than ever before. For four years, Jai Bull has been a mentor for AIM and seen many young people come through the program that can be shy but finish the year with a boost of confidence. They're one of the first ones up the front and they're speaking or if they have to sing or they show one of their special talents or and it's just, um, yeah, it's good to see. Like, I wish I had one of those sort of programs when I was at high school. One of the fundamental ideas is to encourage students to focus on their schoolwork with the mentors, providing that much needed moral support that can be the difference between failing and succeeding. At AIM we try to encourage kids to see school as an opportunity, an education as an opportunity and a way to express your individuality. So that's in incredibly exciting and the results and annual reports show that. So. Yeah, we are excited. In 2009, there were 325 mentors, but with the success of the program, it's now grown to over 3,000 mentors nationally. The University of Wollongong has close to 600, and the program has been expanded into the Shoalhaven and bigger campuses. The release of the report has highlighted the educational success with the university transition rate and coincides nicely with Reconciliation Week. Brenda Newton admits they have big goals ahead of them, such as having 10,000 children mentored with AIM by 2018, but confident they can do it. I think it's more than achievable. Um, we're working with a formula that's fairly basic and accessible. It's, it's about mentors getting in and connecting with young people. Like, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's simple but incredibly effective. My roommate's actually a mentor for AIM and she says it's a great program to be involved in and it's just really rewarding for her too. Yeah, well guys, if you have any comments or opinions, just hashtag us at Newsdesk and join in on the conversation. Tomorrow sees the launch of the Young Writers Month. We have Chloe Higgins, the organiser of the Wollongong Writers Festival with us on set today. Welcome Chloe. Thanks for having me. Hello Chloe. Uh, for the viewers at home that don't know too much about Young Writers Month, well, would you be able just to give a description of it please? Sure. So National Young Writers Month um, is an express media initiative. So express media um, is an organisation based in Melbourne that aims to specifically support young writers through various events, online discussions, publications and so forth. So they run sort of a national um, or online National Young Writers program uh, where they do a bunch of different um, readings and kind of online workshops um, all throughout June. And you can just log on to expressmedia.org.au to check those out. But on a Wollongong level, um, we're kicking off this Thursday night with a launch where we're going to launch the 100th anniversary issue of VoiceWorks magazine as well as the Wollongong based program and it's essentially just a series of workshops and readings and launches aimed at uh, supporting young writers really. So why is it important um, for this association to go ahead? How does it involve students and benefit us? Yeah, okay, so I guess it's important to support the arts and writers as a whole just generally speaking but I think the important question is why should we support young writers and artists specifically? And I guess for me there's quite a big gap between emerging and established artists and it's quite difficult to bridge that gap. And so what I love about National Young Writers Month program is that the workshops and um, you know readings and launches and stuff are sort of aimed at a really emerging level and so we end up with events covering a lot of things that you need to look at when you're getting started. So you know pitching to publishers, um, getting started on your first story, networking, that Helping kind of thing. Helping develop the mm. skills that they will need. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And specifically targeting sort of emerging and young writers. Yeah. yeah. And one last question before we wrap up there is, if I want to get involved, how do I do it? Okay, so like I said, on a national level, if you log on to expressmedia.org.au, you can um, get involved by watching their online events. But on a local level, we've got about, I think, 15 events across the whole month of June um, if you're after more face-to-face -face interaction. So the first um, key event is this Thursday night at Three Chimneys. Just rock up at 7pm, come along for some readings and some networking and some bit of drinks, bit of food, whatever. Um, and we'll be launching the 100th VoiceWorks issue uh, Literary Society zine um, and Turton Gala. 
Um, and then we'll be launching the rest of the program there. Um, and so we've got workshops being run by Lion Break Collective on digital technologies where um, Spineless Wonders is launching one of their digital publications. Uh, we've got a poetry slam by Enough Said happening. So we've got all different ways to get involved. And I guess probably the easiest way other than coming to the launch and finding out more info would be to log on to wollongongwritersfestival.com slash event. And you can see all of the Wollongong based events there that you can come along to. Yeah. Great. That sounds wonderful. So well, thanks for coming in, <laughs> Chloe, anyway. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be joined by Kelsey Suda, who is here to discuss the students' reaction to graduation dates changing. All the latest news happening in the McKinnon building right now. Currently in their second day of fundraising. A body has been found in the boot of a car in Bermagui. All your favourite presenters. Well, I'm Stephen, how you doing? Radio U's Afternoon Shift with Jake and Alex. It's four past eleven and I'm your host Jordan. Live, 11am and 1pm every Thursday from UOW TV Multimedia. With controversy surrounding the change of graduation dates at the University of Wollongong, the Wollongong Undergraduate Students Association has responded during the week. Following the story, we have Kelsey Suter. Thanks for coming in with us, Kelsey. No worries, guys. How's it going? Yeah, Good. going well. Uh, <laughs> but just before we get to the video, would you be able to give us uh, just a summary of your video? Yeah, sure. So during the week, uh, WUSA released a statement basically saying that students weren't informed properly about the changes to graduation this year and looking into the future. Um, but the university did respond, um, saying that is, you know, it's unfortunate the students are disappointed, but that's how the changes are, so. Mm. Alright, cool. We'll have, a, we'll have a look. WUSA President Peter Mumford released the statement Friday morning, saying that it is astounding that the university has gone ahead with the change without adequately consulting elected student representative and the wider student body. Let them know that. It's not okay to just change it without telling anyone. WUSA's international officer, Shil Sullivan, has said that WUSA was not contacted during the consultation process. We're there for the students to speak on their behalf. Just the fact that we haven't been consulted at all makes it really hard for us to be able to do that. UOW Student Services Director Megan Hoosman addressed the statement on Tuesday, saying that the university understood Woos's frustration, but insisted the changes had to be made. We understood when we made these changes that they're big changes and that people have an expectation around their graduation ceremony. Woos believes that many domestic and international students will be unable to attend their graduation ceremonies due to the change in date to April next year. However, the university says that regardless of when the graduation was to take place, some students will simply be unable to put on their gowns and receive their papers. We have had some feedback from some people to say that they're actually glad it's in April. The university will be speaking to WUSA at the University Representation Forum on Wednesday. Kelsey Suda, UOW TV. So Kelsey, there's been current debate among the student bodies that the university is letting too many students in. Is this a problem for the graduation dates? Is it related? Essentially that's what they're changing the graduates, graduation dates for, um, to deal with growing student numbers. Um, the last time they had this new model they're introducing was actually 1999 and but back then they had like a quarter of the student population so essentially yeah they're changing it to deal with student numbers and it's just like getting three graduations in in one day during December mm -hmm. has proved to be not a great model. Quite difficult mm -hmm. I could imagine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the faculties such as business and medicine, they're still allowed to graduate in December, whereas a faculty like the arts are being pushed back to April and they haven't taken too kindly to that. Uh, how do you think UAW will respond to that? Well, what they essentially told me was it wasn't so much, a lot of people are saying it's favouritism and the uni university has said that it's not so much favouritism as the combination of degrees that can graduate. So what they did was they took the three that can graduate in December, so that's um, engineering, information sciences and business, and they made sure that those ones can graduate because they work out better. So they'll have three graduations in one week in December, and the rest of us, just that's just how the numbers worked out, according to the university. What's the president's overall stance on the entire manner? Does he have any, you know... Uh I've, I've, it's fair to say I think that Wooster is really disappointed about the changes, especially the fact they weren't consulted during the process. The process was, took about a year to chat, to run the numbers and crunch numbers and they sort of announced it really hastily over Seoul. So um, the fact is that Wooster were not consulted one bit and they were really disappointed. All right, well, uh, thank you for coming in, Kelsey. We're going to take another break and when we come back, we'll be looking at Australia's biggest morning tea and the space of astronomy. 
rain and gale force winds have lashed the Illawarra coast today. New shoes, Sally, how are they? <laughs> yeah, but it's like the principle of the matter. Okay, yeah. DC or Marvel? Australia's biggest morning tea was held at the Innovation Campus on Thursday morning. Many students, staff and faculty members turned out to donate. If you enjoy your cup of tea, then this would be the highlight. We're at the Innovation Campus at Wollongong for Australia's biggest morning tea. And all proceeds going from Matchbox today are going straight to the Cancer Council. The occasion also marked the cafe's second birthday and proceeds from their products are going to benefit the Cancer Council. And of course raise valuable funds so we can keep delivering those services and carrying out the research that uh, we hope will eventually lead to a cure for cancer. Students, staff and faculty members all emptied their pockets for not only a good cause but also a tasty treat. Lemmingtons, cupcakes and coffee were all rewards for donating to a worthy charity. That's a truly great and innovative way to raise funds for something like uh, cancer, cancer re researching Council, cancer. Definitely. And uh, it's great to see how successful it is. So if you guys at home want to join in the conversation again, just use hashtag newsdesk. The Innovation Campus hosted the Science of Astronomy. Big and little kids got a taste of what it's like among the stars. We have Kristen Dre with the story. Are you amazed by our night sky or want to know the story behind the stars? Innovation Campus has the answers as they unveil the science of astronomy at their discovery night. The Illawarra Astronomical Society supported the event where over 150 people came out. The evening involved planetarium shows, science displays, as well as science busking activities, all catered for kids young and old. Seven high-tech telescopes were also set out for individuals to look into the night sky and gaze into the depths of outer space. That looks amazing. That did look a little <laughs> oh, Did you see the <laughs> glowing globe? You know how you put your hands on your hair? Oh, oh, no, I, I used to love that as a kid. I remember oh. doing that in high school too. That was fun. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to the next one for sure. Yeah. Definitely. If you guys went there, please hashtag us news desk with any thoughts about it. This brings us to the end of our last episode of the session. It's I'll, I'm wearing a flannel. It's casual, so <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of Any the last Any excuse, one. Fat. Exactly. Um, don't all forget. Of, sorry. <laughs> you can you off. You go for it, Ellie. Okay. All of us here are wishing everyone the best of luck in their exam preparation. Make sure you take some time out though and have a little bit of a relaxation R and R, of course. Yes, always needed. <laughs> and my study tip is drink lots of coffee. But thanks for joining us this week on News Desk, and make sure to catch all of our extra work on UWTV TV multi. Media. And on our Facebook page. And our website, UAWTVMultimedia.com. We'll catch you guys in the next session. Bye. <laughs>